Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is Pentecost, which you can probably see or you, you will see as we go through all the images of fire and the Holy Spirit and other things uh, in the images of our PowerPoint this morning. So Pentecost is the 50th day after Easter. Um, I was talking with a member via email quite recently about the significance of all the days, the festivals of ancient Israel. So um, the Passover on which Christ died, so, that, so uh, he had the Last Supper where you have the Passover meal, and then he died as the Passover lamb on the cross, and since Jews count evening to morning rather than morning to evening, so for the Jews, the Monday Thursday meal and the Good Friday sacrifice on the cross were on the same day. Interesting. So that's Passover. The Sabbath, the day of rest, that was when Jesus was in the tomb. When Jesus rose from the grave on Easter Sunday, that would have actually been um, uh, the f festival of first fruits in the Jewish calendar. So that's that's when uh, you would wave the first fruits of the field. So Jesus uh, before God as a recognition of what God has done for you, that he has brought into this world things for you to have life. So Jesus Christ rose from the grave as the first fruits from the dead for our lives. And then the 50th day, uh, or a week of weeks, so seven times seven days, afterwards you have the festival of weeks, also known as Pentecost. So Pentecost is uh, the day when you're kind of um, bringing th this forgiveness this idea of forgiveness, this proclamation of God to the people. So the Holy Spirit is bringing this to the people with not only a wave offering, so not only recognizing the first fruits of the dead Jesus Christ, but also with uh, living sacrifices. Um, but that's a, that's a little bit of a side note. Uh, I, I got enough time for the people to get from the choir loft down here so they can manage the PowerPoint now. <laughs> so Pentecost is basically the only day on the church calendar where we focus specifically on the Holy Spirit. So because of this, you'll find some of the hymns are a little less familiar. Maybe you won't recognize the prayers, uh, especially since this is going to be the only time during the church here we're going to address prayers, specifically the Holy Spirit, which are set prayers. We can do that any day of the year, but set prayers, this is the only day. Um, so I thank you for joining us today and... Uh, Worshipping our Lord, looking towards Jesus Christ, brought to us through the Holy Spirit. So let us join together in the service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful king. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
We continue with the introit from Psalm 104. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Testament reading for Pentecost comes from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and, me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, 
O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue in prayer with Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, you know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The, the night is as like bright as the day, for darkness, darkness is as light with you. you. Glory be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. The second reading for Pentecost comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they, that is, the, the apostles and other followers of Jesus, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under, under heaven. And, it, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, 
Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vaporous smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Continue with the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia! Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for I do not go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to be thee, O Christ. Christ. Having heard the word of God, we confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Time for the children's message. Gee, I wonder what it could be on. Well, in a little bit of a contrast with the picture here, I'm going to start out by talking about Pentecost. So what is Pentecost besides an odd Greek word? Well, Pentecost is the 50th day after Jesus Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday, when the Holy Spirit comes to the Church of God. Now, the Church of God at that time was not a building, or conceived of as a building, but was purely the people. So when the Holy Spirit comes to the Church to make the Church alive in Christ, the Holy Spirit is coming directly to people. This is similar to how he comes to us. He doesn't come to us just because we have a nice building, but because we are the people of God. So the Holy Spirit came to the apostles and other followers of Jesus to appear upon them as like tons of fire. So if you imagine a ton eh, over somebody's head, burning, yeah, pretty interesting sight, I would say. Now, the Holy Spirit coming, tons of fire, also with a, the sound of a mighty rushing wind, well, this was the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, something that St. Peter talks about in uh, the book of Acts. I read that this morning. He's talking about the Holy Spirit being poured on God's people. So, how is the Holy Spirit poured on us? Well, I can tell you one thing. It does not happen to us today as tons of fire and a mighty rushing wind. That, that doesn't happen every day. That happened at Pentecost, but normally that doesn't happen. How the Holy Spirit does come to us normally is in the Word of God, being poured out in the Word of God, because the Holy Spirit gives to us the words to say, which we find in Scripture, and even brings these words to other people. But in a very more concrete way, which hopefully you've all experienced, uh, even if you were too young to remember, the Holy Spirit comes to us being poured out in baptism. Now, why do we need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit brings to us faith and life and hope in Christ Jesus. In baptism specifically, what the Holy Spirit does for us is he forgives our sins and brings to us salvation. So, Without baptism, without the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God, which we find in Scripture, working through the waters of baptism, we'd actually be lost. Because if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't have faith or even Christ himself. We would just be off and lost in our own sins. But what God does for us is pour out his Holy Spirit to us through his Word, through, his, through our baptisms that we might actually be forgiven all our sins, brought into God's family, made God's own beloved child, and receive forgiveness as, as receive salvation, sorry, as God brings us into his kingdom as his own child. So, we have this promise given to us in baptism, and we have this promise renewed day by day. Because even though baptism happened once in the past, the effects of baptism, the Holy Spirit given to us, he does not abandon us after baptism, but continues in our lives, continuously bringing us to God's word and scripture, bringing us even uh, to confirmation where you can actually be confirmed in the church and receive Holy Communion, so that by God's word, by God's sacraments of Holy Baptism, Holy Communion, we continue to receive throughout our lives forgiveness of sins and the promise of salvation, because God pours out his Holy Spirit for you. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus Christ our Lord, for sending to us the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have poured him out upon us in baptism and continuously throughout our lives by your holy word. Thank you for this gift of the forgiveness of sins by way of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the promise of salvation. And keep us in the faith so that 
when we meet our end, we will find you and see and enter into you, enter into your kingdom to come. In your name, O Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you, in the name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I guess that greeting is slightly incomplete because, well, the Holy Spirit is definitely part of the Trinity, but often one that is somewhat neglected. Uh, so whenever I have the opportunity to preach about the Holy Spirit, I definitely try to take that opportunity and do so. Now, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh. This was to declare the good news about Jesus Christ, declaring it through the people on whom the Holy Spirit was poured upon. And this was so that by the preaching of the word, many 
would have faith created in them by way of the Spirit. Now, the sheer number of peoples and regions being named in the reading from Acts, well, this shows how far-reaching the Spirit's message of salvation in Christ is. Everyone within earshot heard that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. When St. Peter spoke up to talk about this, he said that the gift of the Holy Spirit is, not, is also not limited to age groups, social classes, or genders, just as it is not limited to any particular nationalities or languages. Rather, the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins is a message for every last human being. And this is the story we know and the story we hear about year after year on Pentecost. Salvation in Christ is for all people. However, when we look to the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, we can see that there is a very specific group present on which the Holy Spirit was poured upon. Peter declared that the Spirit was poured out on all flesh, regardless of personal characteristics, but only those who were already followers of Christ had tons of fire over their heads. So, does this mean that God is, well, discriminating against certain people? Well, no, not in the least. What we actually see is the fulfillment of the promises God has made to us. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples because they already had faith. Then the Holy Spirit was poured out on all flesh around them through the words of the, of the apostles to then create faith through the preaching of the word and baptism. It is this pouring out of the Holy Spirit with which we are more familiar because we did, were not already in the faith and then received the Holy Spirit yet again, but that the Holy Spirit was poured out to us through word and sacrament that we might actually have faith created within us by the Holy Spirit, a faith which brings us to Christ so we receive the forgiveness of sins by him. Now, the sign, So the signs of a mighty rushing wind through our church or a fire from heaven bestowing new languages on us, yeah, that does not happen every day. But through the normal means, the Holy Spirit is still poured out by the proclamation of the gospel message and in the baptism of uh, and the sacrament of baptism to work faith and salvation among us. The means by which the Spirit is poured out has changed between Pentecost and everything after Pentecost. But the universality of the message for all peoples does not. God does not discriminate. One of the things our present culture is extremely sensitive about is discrimination treating people unfairly for a superficial reason, really, such as uh, race, age, or gender. Some of the social movements that have been in the news in the past couple of years have focused on preventing or correcting discrimination in our society. While the movements themselves have not yet been able to bring peace on earth, and simply by looking at the Bible and the principle of original sin within us all, I would say that that's impossible to happen. But we still want to look in our world and have all people striving to love their neighbors as themselves. We, and I don't mean just us within the church, but all people, we should not make unjust or hurtful words or actions against someone else. We should look at them as human beings who are in need of the same love and care that we need, love that comes only from our God. Now, there are a number of passages in the Bible that say God does not discriminate, but the more familiar phrase would be along the lines of, God shows no partiality. Bottom line, God does not treat people unjustly. He has created you in his image. He has made you to love you and give you life. God is continuously treating you well because he has made you 
to receive his love. And this is not only true for you, for, but for all people. So all people are made by God to receive his love. And if you were doing what you should by following his commandments, the Lord has you remain in the blessings that he gives you day by day. However, if you do evil, the Lord will punish you for your sin. Therefore, it is true, the Lord shows no favoritism. No matter who you are, God wants to love you. And also, no matter who you are, if you sin, you face judgment for that sin. God does not let you off scot-free for disobeying the commands he has put in place. So let's think about this a, a little bit more. I'll, I'll bring up a hypothetical example. Let's, let's say you were out with your friends and you all committed a crime. Uh, perhaps you were walking about and went into, onto a piece of pro uh, property you shouldn't have, a piece of private property. A police officer comes by and accuses you and all your friends of trespassing. All of you try to ask for mercy so the cop will let you off with only a warning, but the police officer will have none of it. You are all equally guilty of the exact same crime. You and all your friends must pay for this crime. Well, except for the one friend over there to whom the police officer shows favoritism. The police officer points to one of your friends and says, he will let that friend go. Walk away. You're fine. Why? No reason. The officer simply decides to make that person his favorite in the group. So you and your other friends all get hauled down to the police station, put in jail, and now have uh, charges pressed against you by, by the property owner, but for the friend the officer liked, well, that friend is now resting at home with no worries at all. This is not fair. There is no difference between you or any one of your friends. Punishment given to one of you should be given to all of you. And likewise, mercy if shown to any one of you, should be given to all of you. It is, at, is it at all fair that someone is randomly selected to receive mercy while everyone else is punished for the exact same crime that, they, that that person committed? No. God will punish everyone according to their sins, and he shows mercy equally to everyone by sending Jesus Christ into the world. On the cross, Jesus made satisfaction for all sins for all time, so all may be saved through faith. This is why the Holy Spirit is poured out on all flesh to be professed to all people everywhere. The mercy of the Lord does not discriminate. God saves through Jesus Christ. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But not everyone desires salvation through Christ our Lord and rejects not only Jesus, but also the Holy Spirit who brings this good news. Those who wish to remain in their sin apart from faith in Christ are allowed by God to do so. Again, God does not discriminate. All are condemned by God because of the sins for which they are personally responsible. All are shown mercy by God, for he sent his only Son in, not to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. So, bringing these two principles together, if someone is not in Christ by faith, to receive by faith the forgiveness of sins, then they are condemned for their sins because they do not have Christ to forgive them their sins. Some are saved, but not others, but God is not discriminating against anyone. For each person, God condemns sin, yet forgives sin through the faith in Christ. 
It is only that if you are without sin, then you are without a way to receive forgiveness. When we see the Holy Spirit poured out on all flesh, we see him poured out on all flesh. God does not discriminate based on things so, in, so insignificant as age, gender, race, or language. The gift of faith in, in Christ Jesus from the Holy Spirit is a gift meant for all people. For all people are loved by our Lord. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but desires that the wicked turn from their way by the message of the Spirit and live by faith in Christ. At Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out on those who were in the faith so that the Spirit, working through the words they spoke, bring many to life-saving faith. I mean, this was how you were called. The Holy Spirit was poured out on you to create faith within you. When you received the word of forgiveness in Jesus in the waters of baptism or through speech, your sins were cleansed from you and eternal life was placed within you. It is a gift meant for all people and given especially to you. The Lord has called you specifically into salvation. Similar to how a person is condemned for their own personal sins, God forgives you as an individual. When the Spirit called others to faith at Pentecost, the Spirit was not simply throwing a message out into the air. The Holy Spirit had the disciples speak in all kinds of languages so those who were around them could hear. The Spirit makes himself a gift for all people, but comes to each one of us in a way unique to you. Those who were from Egypt, the Holy Spirit called out at Pentecost in Coptic. To those who were from Rome, the Spirit called out in Latin. And when you were called to saving faith in Christ, the Spirit used a language you understood. If you were called as a child in baptism, then the Spirit used a language of trust for which you did not yet have words. There is no discrimination. The Holy Spirit is poured out on all, so all may come to faith, regardless of age, race, gender, or even mental development and education. The pouring out of the Spirit is what makes the Church. We are all different, composed of various ages, races, genders, social classes, mental abilities, and all else besides. This is something good about God's church. We do not forbid anyone from receiving the word of God from the Holy Spirit. All are welcome to hear and believe. If you were to withhold the message of Christ from someone, well, then, then you're also withholding yourself from the Spirit, for the Spirit is the one directing you to pour out the gospel message for those people. As the Lord desires all to be saved, so should you desire all to be saved. The world may break itself apart through division, but for us, there can be no discrimination in the faith. Whatever is said to another person in good faith should be for the other person's benefit. Sometimes these things that are said can be harsh. Proclaiming God's law that people are sinners and are condemned for their sins is harsh. But the message that God saves us through Jesus Christ is a message sweeter than honey. Whatever you say, say so that the hearer may have the word of God, a message of God for them. The Spirit pours himself out through the word of God, so proclaiming the word is never wrong. Jesus comes to us, all of us, in mercy, to deliver us from our sins at the cross. Proclaim this message of Christ crucified to all peoples. Maybe not Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, but how about 
Canadians and Americans and residents of all other nations, English speakers and those who speak other tongues, young and old, infants and adults, millionaires and the homeless, those with mental handicaps and those without. God has made all people and desires all of them to be saved. Let us all join together so those who are different, yet who are all the same, loved by the Lord. Let us join together in his message where he gives unto us salvation in Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the holy Christian church throughout the world and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. for the educational institutions of, of our church, for our preschools, our day schools and high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those you have called your church you have called within your church to witness that Christ crucified you to bring salvation. Grant them your Holy Spirit that they may proclaim the good news of your salvation so that all who hear it may receive the gift of salvation in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the faithful that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty the Lord provides, support the church and to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or infirm, we pray especially for Margaret, Hildegard, Gail, Judith, Erica, Evelyn, Alma, Jean, Bruce, Laura, David, Richard, Martina, Linnea, and Wilfred and all those we name in our hearts now. That God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own High Priest. Grant, gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Drawn together by the Holy Spirit and baptized into one holy Christian church, we pray the prayer that our Lord has given us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 I have a few announcements. Hopefully these will just be fairly brief. Uh, mainly it's just upcoming events in the next week or so. So... Tomorrow, holiday, not going to be much happening, but Tuesday, there is May 25th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., Christian Estate Planning Basics, a webinar. So I sent this out at an email last week. I also uh, shared the link within the email that I sent out for this service uh, just yesterday. If you would like to be part of that webinar, you have to register beforehand. So click the link that I sent in either one of those emails. Uh, either one of the emails from this church and you can register real quick it took me like five seconds so uh, just just so you have Christian estate planning basics the webinar so one hour webinar May 25th 7 p.m. Uh, also May 25th there might be changes from the government so that afternoon they the government might uh, will probably give announcements for changing of restrictions so please watch those. I'll be watching them to see if, well, there are any changes in restrictions for our worships. Hopefully we can worship indoors, but I don't know if they'll still allow that. I, or they'll allow us to have it, just, just because we haven't had much luck. But we hope and pray that, that God enlightens the hearts of those in government, that we can come together and, and worship as one body of the church here. Uh, Thursday, 1 p.m., LWMLC Bible Study. This is done over Zoom, so please bring yourself. Please invite friends. Uh, we've had past few Zoom meetings, these Bible studies, the past few ones. We've had a good representation from all over the island, even one person who wasn't on the island for the last one. Uh, that, that, that's been fun. So please join that. Join with... The LWML, not only here in this congregation, but uh, in multiple congregations. So, um, oh, if you want a teaser for that, we're going to be looking at a devotion on the life of Katie Luther, Martin Luther's wife. I've been reading up on this. <laughs> um, next Sunday, we will uh, congregation meeting at noon over Zoom. So congregation meeting at noon over Zoom next Sunday. So please tend, please share your thoughts about various things. Please uh, come to be informed about what's going on in the church. I know we haven't really had our usual fellowship after the service. So uh, congregation meeting is a good, excuse me, a good place to find out exactly what's going on here at the church. So next Sunday, noon over Zoom. And that is all the announcements that I have. So let us join together in our closing hymn, Creator Spirit by Whose Aid. <laughs> 